me Allie. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. I'm here today with a video that makes my heart so, so happy. If you are subscribed to me here on YouTube or if you follow me on Instagram or you just know me in real life, you know that Beauty and the Beast is my all-time favorite Disney movie of ever. It is everything to me. I am obsessed with it. I get all the feels every single time that I watch that movie. And in today's video, I have a Beauty and the Beast inspired DIY video for you. I had so, so much fun filming this video and I'm actually thinking about making it into like a two or three parter because I have so much more that I want to share with you that I just could not fit into one video. So yeah, stay tuned if this video kind of does well and you guys enjoy it. I might do a couple more of these DIY Beauty and the Beast craft type of videos. If you have any other questions or concerns, ask them in the comments below. All of these were inspired by the wonderful world of Pinterest and give this video a big thumbs up if you are super, super excited excited for the live action video. I just cannot wait for that movie. I'm like seriously thinking about taking a personal day the next day so I can go to the midnight showing of it. But yes, enough with this intro. I love you guys so much and let's just get right into this video. first craft was so much fun to create. All you're going to need are some perler beads. I found this huge tub of perler beads on Amazon for about $10. You're also going to need to go onto Pinterest and find some Beauty and the Beast inspired templates. I found that when working with perler beads, it is really, really awesome to have some tweezers with you because it makes it a lot easier to pick the beads up. When I was working with just my fingers, I was knocking some of the beads over every time I was placing them down on the grid, but using the tweezers made it a lot easier. So basically all I did here was just have the template on my phone and I just put it on the side and then I just recreated the template onto the grid. Once you are satisfied with your design, you're going to take a sheet of wax paper and gently place it on top of your creation. Then you want to take an iron on a hotter setting. I put mine on the cotton setting and you just want to go over your pattern until the beads stick together. Your design should be stuck to the wax paper at this time, so take a finger or two and carefully start pulling away your design off of the paper. And here's the final product. I am absolutely in love with the way that these came out. They were so much fun to make. And to be honest with you, this was actually very therapeutic for me. I just found myself very at ease while I was making them. I ended up making a Lumiere and a Cogsworth. I definitely want to try a belt in the future. And Adam's nephew actually made me a chip, which you will see right here in this clip. Seriously though, how stinking cute are all of these? I am just obsessed. For this bright stained glass vase, you're going to need a glass vase of some sort. I'm actually using a glass milk jug that I got from DarbySmart.com. You're also going to need a black oil-based marker, and all you want to do is draw a bunch of geometric shapes all over the glass vase. Grab some markers in an assortment of different colors. I tried to stick to the rainbow color, so I used red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And then you just want to start shading in all of those geometric shapes. I definitely found that Sharpies worked the best for this. They went on really, really smooth, really clear, and really concise.
And that's pretty much all there is to it. I ended up taking a small bouquet of fake roses that I got at the Dollar Tree and placed them right in the center of the vase in true Beauty and the Beast fashion. This vase came out so gorgeous and it just illuminates during the daylight if the sun is shining through it seriously just lights up my entire office it is so so pretty it was so easy to make and ridiculously inexpensive which makes it a two thumbs up craft in my book Now for my favorite clip of this video, the gray stuff. We're going to be making homemade gray stuff to put on top of cupcakes or brownies or just to eat right out of the bowl. You're going to need to start off with one and a half cups of whole milk as well as an entire package of instant vanilla and you want to either put this in a hand mixer, whisk it yourself, or use a KitchenAid mixer like I have here. Mix for about three to five minutes or until the pudding starts to firm up. Place your vanilla pudding in the refrigerator for about 10 minutes and while it's in the refrigerator chilling you can start with your Oreos. You need to take 12 Oreos and you need to crush them up really really finely. If you have a food processor that would probably be your best bet to use. I don't have a food processor so I just wrap mine up in some wax paper and there's Jax trying to sneak an Oreo and I just use a rolling pin to kind of smash them out. Take your vanilla pudding out of the refrigerator, add it back into your mixer, and then add in the Oreos and start to mix it again for another three to five minutes. The next step and one of the most important steps in making the gray stuff is to add in 8 ounces of a whipped topping. I am using Cool Whip. This is so important because it's going to make your gray stuff nice and light and fluffy. You just want to add it into your mixture and fold it all in. Place your bowl back in the refrigerator for at least an hour to chill. While it is chilling, prepare whatever you want to eat with your gray stuff. I just went with a brownie because that is similar to what they serve at the Be Our Guest restaurant in Walt Disney World. And when it was done chilling, I just put it in a piping bag with a star tip and I piped it right on top of my brownie. Finally, I finish up this delicious sweet treat by adding some edible pearls right to the top. And here it is, probably the best dessert I have ever made in my entire life, hands down. I was literally eating this stuff straight out of the bowl with a spoon. It was seriously that good. And it is also extremely comparable to the real deal that you can get at Magic Kingdom at the Be Our Guest restaurant. That is definitely one of my favorite things to get when I go to Walt Disney World. And now I can make it pretty much 365 days a year. I really hope you guys give this one a go. Let me know in the comments below if you try it out because you will not be disappointed. To make this Gaston inspired wall decor, you're going to need a frame or a canvas. I'm just using an old frame that I already had at my house. You're also going to need a reindeer cutout. I got mine at Target, but if you don't have any of these around you or you can't find these at the store, you can always make your own out of some cardstock and I have a video on how to do that. I will link it in the description below. You're also going to need some stick on letters and I got these from Walmart. Basically all you want to do for this craft, it is super, super simple. You want to write out, I use antlers and all of my decorating like Gaston 
Gaston says in the Gaston song. And if you put any of your letters on kind of crooked like I did here, you can just gently peel them off and replace them on. The last step is just to hot glue your reindeer right onto your canvas or onto your frame. I love the simplicity of this DIY. I think it came out amazing. I love that it's kind of like a hidden Disney gem. If you place this in your house and you have a lot of people come over, I don't think people would automatically assume that it comes from a Disney movie, but people who are kind of Disney nerds like myself that come into my house can kind of rejoice and laugh and start singing the song the second that they look at this craft. And for the final DIY of this video, we're going to be making a bell inspired bow. You'll need to start off with either a piece of gold fabric or yellow fabric and you basically just want to take the perimeter of the fabric and you want to glue it in so that you have nice clean edges. Once the length portion is glued down on both sides, you want to take the width portion of your fabric and you want to glue both of the pieces into the center. Making the bow itself is actually quite easy. All you want to do is pinch at the middle and then squeeze the top and the bottom together and you'll be left with a beautiful bow, but we are not ready to do that yet. I just wanted to show you the steps on how to make a bow first. The next thing that you want to do is take a glittery gold piece of fabric or a glittery yellow piece of fabric and just repeat the steps that you did previously to make a bow, but you're going to make a smaller one this time to put right in the center. Now you can take the center and pinch it together like we just did previously and this is what's going to make your beautiful bow. You have a multi-layer bow now which is really cool. It adds a lot of dimension. In order to keep it together you just want to take a strip of either of your fabric and just wrap it all the way around the middle and then hot glue it down. Play around with the fabric a little bit, fluff it out, and you should be left with a beautiful homemade bow. To truly make this a bow inspired by the beautiful Belle herself, we can of course not forget about that signature red rose. Take a fake miniature red rose and place it right in the center of your bow. And the very final step is adding on your barrette or your bobby pin or whatever you're going to be using to attach it to your head. I just took a barrette that I got at the Dollar Tree and I just shoved it right underneath the fabric that I used to wrap around my bow. And here it is, the final bell bow and the final craft of this video. I really hope you enjoyed watching. Please let me know what you thought in the comments below and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and you enjoy my videos. If you decide to try any of these out on your own, please send me pictures on Instagram or on Twitter. I would love to see your recreations. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I love you guys to the moon and back and I will talk to you soon. Bye guys.